and welcome ladies and gentlemen. Today's topic is materials adaptation. We are going to talk about it, but first, let's meet our team. This is me, Tuchet Hanturk, and these are my mates, Zeynep, Yamur, and Tnar. And here are table of contents. We'll discuss materials adaptation, adaptation techniques, and creative classroom. Let's begin with materials adaptation. What is materials adaptation? Well, it can be defined as the application of some strategies to make the textbook more effective and flexible. Most English teaching programs focus on teaching materials as a fundamental part of it. Although there are many available materials on the internet, most teachers spend a lot of time to produce their own materials because they need to be chosen in line with these features and proficiency level of the students. What are these features? Well, there are two categories, external factors and internal factors. Here is some external factors, age, level of proficiency, academic and educational level, motivation and attitudes to learning, interests, aptitude, mother tongue, prepared learning styles and personality. When these factors are not considered, teachers face some situations like inappropriate subject matter for age, unsuitable contents for learners' level of proficiency, and etc. What about internal factors? Here they are. Content, organization, and consistency. Well, but why do we need to adapt materials? Teachers need to adapt materials to fulfill the goals and objectives of schools. Teachers need to adapt materials to be able to finish the lesson within the given time. Unexpected requirements are needed if there is no adaptation. To be able to engage learners' personality, interest, age and needs, teachers need to adapt materials. Teachers need to adapt materials to match between what is needed and what is provided by materials. And of course, to be sure if the materials are suitable for learners' culture. What are objectives here? Well, localization, personalization, individualization, and modernization. We need to be sure if the teaching materials are appropriate in context. Materials need to relate the content to learners' interests and experiences. By adapting, we need to address learners' individual learning style and we need to get rid of the old language and content. Our aims here are making communicative dialogues, making activities purposeful and relating them to the topic, to meet the external and psychological needs of students, and using, using authentic language models. To adopt materials, there are some principles. Firstly, teachers should adopt the materials to taste of their students, not their own. Secondly, they should adopt according to the overall framework of the materials. All should be done in a reasonable proportion. And finally, Materials should not be adopted just for exams and tests. I'm going to be talking about materials adaptation techniques. Materials are fundamental to language learning and teaching, but finding appropriate material for the student's cognitive and linguistic level is not always simple to access. The adaptation can be quantitative or qualitative. Materials can be adapted and modified according to match with the learner's needs and the teacher's demands. The first technique is addition. Addition is a procedure that involves supplementation of extra linguistic items and activities if texts, pictures or tasks are not provided and fewer than needed. For example, a teacher may prepare visuals or short videos to provide more information about an activity or task. The second one is extending. 
This type of change is only done quantitatively. It means supplying more of the same type of material. For example, a teacher may repeat the same or similar activity, topic, in order for students to comprehend better. The next one is expanding. This type of adaptation can be done both quantitatively and quite qualitatively. It means adding something different to the materials. For example, a teacher may provide more visuals and activities. The next one is deletion. Deletion is simply the opposite process of addition. Addition and deletion often work together. Material may be taken out and then replaced with something else. For example, a part of an activity that is hard to understand or extra may be taken out from it or it can be changed into a different one. The next one is subtracting. Subtracting is a quantitative change. It refers to extracting parts of the available materials to make it more useful. For example, some parts of an activity may be taken out to make it more clear. The next one is averaged. It's a qualitative change. In this procedure, certain parts are excluded and focus is on other parts. For example, a structure or a part of an activity may be reduced to make it more simpler and clear. The procedure of simplification is a type of modification. We can call it a rewriting activity. Its aim is to make an activity suitable to learner's level. And we can simplify materials according to sentence structure, lexical content and grammatical structures. In sentence structure, sentence length is reduced or a complex sentence is rewritten as a number of simpler ones. In lexical content, complicated words are changed into simpler ones. And in grammatical structures, advanced grammar structures that hard to comprehend are transformed into simpler structures. Another adaptation technique is modification. Modification is a very general term in the language when applying any kind of change. It is the act or a process of changing something in order to improve it or make it more acceptable. Modification is divided into two parts and the first one is rewriting. When the material is appropriate for a group of students in terms of language use, the teacher may decide to rewrite it in order to make it more communicative or more demanding. For example, when the teacher sees something unfamiliar to our country or daily life in terms of culture in the material, she or he can change it with more relevant cultural content by rewriting. Therefore, rewriting may relate activities more closely to learners' own backgrounds and interests. It introduces models of authentic language. And the second modification type is restructuring. The teacher sometimes changes the structure of the activity or task. It is the process of restructuring the material according to the number of the students or the current learning situation. For example, when the teacher wants to do an activity for a certain number of groups and he, realize, he or she realizes that the material and the number of people do not match, then she or he should adjust it by making the necessary arrangements. With another example, sometimes a written language explanations which are prepared to be read and studied individually can be transformed into an interactive one to foster communication among students and that becomes the restructuring of a material. Another adaptation technique after modification is replacement. The teacher may replace one visual for a more culturally appropriate one or may replace an entire activity with one that she or he feels will meet the goals of the lesson. An inadequate material may be replaced by more suitable ones. So, if one material seems unable to meet the student's language learning needs, the teacher should replace it with another. Another adaptation technique is 
reordering. Teachers may decide that the order in which the textbooks are presented is not suitable for their students and can decide to sequence the tasks and activities in the textbooks. This procedure refers to the possibility of putting the parts of a course book in a different order. This may mean adjusting the sequence of presentation in the unit or taking units in a different sequence. And also we can say that language needs of the students will determine the sequence in the material. And our last adaptation technique is branching. Teachers may decide to add options to the existing activity or to suggest an alternative pathway through the activity. In other words, the teacher may want to add different interpretations to existing activities and put them in different situations in order to present diversity in the material to the students. And our material adaptation techniques were up to here. Hello everyone, my name is Punar and today I'll be talking about the fun part, which is activity type in Creative Classroom. First thing first, we have storytelling and drama, of course. Probably everyone had a part in a play when they were in kindergarten or primary school. Remember those days for a minute. You feel yourself as if you belong to that group of friends, right? And also, you might feel yourself responsible. So, according to Jesu, in order to make learning a more enjoyable process, teachers should show their acting skills in the classroom. When teachers add mimic, visual aids, entertaining tone to the stories they tell, it will take the attention of young learners, as their attention doesn't long last long, he says. Furthermore, all those fancy costumes like pirates, ghosts, prince, princess, even wearing a dragon costume make it really fun. Also, it enables kids to like the school, they become more enthusiastic. According to Angie Damati, thanks to the drama, in EFL classes, students develop their language skills and it creates a student-centered classroom. Angel Lamati also emphasized that drama activities contribute to students' maturity and motivation. He also says that, of course, there might be some difficulties while playing in the classroom. Students might make some mistakes, but feedback should be given by the teacher. Students might also be timid at first. Teachers should help them by finding a way. Furthermore, drama is not the only entertainment source to teach English to kids, of course. There are other things to involve students into the classroom and other ways to make the classroom a student-centered one. According to Jester, the most powerful aspect of songs is children are never enough of beating them all the time with a memorable rhythm. As they like singing at young age, they can tell the songs by heart, also it enables them to learn lots of different words. He also emphasized the fact that songs should be appropriate for children's age too. My advice for the teachers is follow the trend movies like Frozen, Up, Tangle, Beanie and the Beast. The reason is kids are fond of such movies and they want to know everything and want to have their like t-shirts, bags, etc. As they use a lot of songs in the movies, it makes it easier for kids to learn English. Thanks to the songs, children can learn new phrases, verbs, adjectives, numbers and even country names. Right now, let's take a look at my cousin Dennis's example. She's 10 years old and she's a young learner of English. Thank you, Denise, for your contribution. So, continue with arts and crafts. According to Case, teachers should prepare the activity which enables students to talk with each other. Also, one of the students can act as if he or she is a teacher. In addition to this, he also says that students can chant over what they do during the lessons like color the apple red, color the apple red. Let's continue with praising. 
Furthermore, it should be in the mind that a positive classroom environment is crucial for learners. As they are young learners of English, they might be sensitive and they want to be encouraged by their teachers. This way, it enables them to be more interactive and positive in the classroom. There are lots of praising words to say actually. For example, we can say, good job, well done, that looks very good or keep going. So, the other important aspects of teaching English to young learners is giving instructions in English. Of course, speaking English all the time is the best option, however, repeating the things, same things every day enables them to memorize those words or phrases. For example, we can say, repeat after me, please, clean the board, please, put your card on, off, be quiet, pay attention, kids, or make a circle. And the other important aspect of teaching English to young learners is they should be active during the lesson. When only the teacher speaks, the effective learning cannot occur because there are four skills of English. Two of them are receptive and the other ones are productive. Students should be productive and creative, so teachers should let them speak with their own words. For example, they can say, can you repeat the question? Can I go to the restroom? Can I collect the papers? What does it mean? So it's Dennis' turn. Can I go to the restroom? I did get in. How do you say to in English? Thanks, Dennis, once again. Also, there is organized games. As these are young learners, they want to be physically active because they have a lot of energy. Sitting in the chair for like 40 minutes can only harm their body. In order to prevent laziness and in order to wake them up, especially in the morning, the important thing is, as games are played so spontaneously apart from the rules, it enables them to talk with a preparation, without a preparation. Apart from teaching self-control, Social rules to children games can be seen as a medium to teach English to kids in a natural way, just like the native speakers do. It should be in the mind that as these are young learners, they might be affected very easily by competition. In order to prevent this, teachers should not prefer playing competitive games. Games should be appropriate for the kids. Games should be chosen according to their age, skills, English levels. For example, especially while carrying out a science for game in English, all the precautions should be taken in order to prevent a damage. Also, if the teacher has a crowded class, it will be better not to play very active and exciting games during the lesson. It might result in hurting each other. In conclusion, in the light of Jesser's book and other academic essays, we can easily say that young learners of English should be active learners in the classroom. Teachers should help them in order to create a student-centered classroom, because English cannot be learned by being a passive learner, but only by being an active learner. In order to create such place, drama activities, little games, contests, outdoor activities should be conducted with the help of the teacher. By doing so, students, even the very introvert students, will start speaking in the lessons. They will be very passionate about being a part of the classroom with their counterparts. Hello, my dear students. Hello. Today's topic is combining a book and a video. So as you know, I sent you some book pages and a video. So I'm your teacher, as you know, and you're my students. So we will read a story related to your age. So Tuche, as far as I remember, I sent you the video. Can you start the video, please? Yes, yeah, sure. Poor Thank orphan you. boy called Dick Whittington. The people in his village believed that the streets of London were paved with gold. So Dick decided to travel there and become a rich man. Dick walked for many days, but when he arrived in London, 
there were no streets of gold. Tired and hungry, he fell asleep on the steps of a great house. The house belonged to a rich businessman who found Dick and gave him a job cleaning the kitchen. Dick worked very hard and was happy. He had enough to eat and at night he could sleep by the fire. There was a problem though. At night, rats ran around the kitchen and kept him awake. So Dick went out and found the fastest rat-catching cat in London. The cat caught all the rats that came into the house and Dick could sleep at night. The businessman heard about the amazing cat and asked Dick if he could take it on his ship to catch rats on his next journey. Dick agreed, but was very sad to see the cat go. Meow. While the businessman was away, the other servants were very mean to Dick. So Dick decided to run away. But as he was leaving, one of the great church bells rang. It seemed to say, Turn back, Dick Whittington, Mayor of London. So Dick came back to the house, and soon the businessman returned. He was very happy because Dick's cat had caught all the rats on the ship. He gave Dick a reward and promoted him to his assistant. Dick worked hard for the businessman and learned everything he could. Eventually, he married the businessman's daughter and started a very successful business of his own. And yes, he did become Mayor of London. I guess that's the end of this video. So, in this video, it summarizes all the chapters. However, we will go by chapter to chapter. So, is there anything you want to say? Like, um, what do you think about the characters? Can you name someone? Uh, the rich. boy, Dick. Dick, right? Uh, what? Rich man. Yes. Business, rich man, rich businessman. No, rich man is bad. London's, London's fastest cat. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Where does this plot take place? In London. In London. London. So, Tuncha, as far as I remember, I've sent you the page also. Can you open them and share with us, please? Yep, wait a second. This is not a hard story. We understand everything. And if you have any question, of course, you can ask me. So, right now we see the cover of the book. Can everyone see the cover of the book? Yes, we can. Yes. Yep. Okay, do you want to say something related to that? Like, are there any items related to London? Or what do you want to say about the colors? Would you like to read this book? You can say anything related to the book. We can see the view of the city. Yeah, is it beautiful? Yes, yeah. it is. Yeah. I can see that the boy is poor. Mm -hmm. Because his he has a... are dirty and look old. Yeah, you are absolutely right. And there are homes in the faraway place. I think you want to go right yep y yeah so, we will read the first chapter is there anyone willing to read the first chapter I the first... Can. okay you can please continue once upon a time there was a poor boy who was called dick withington his mother and father were dead and he had no one to care for him dick lived in a small village in the country he tried to work for his living, but he could not always find work to do. Dick was very poor. His clothes were thin and ragged, and sometimes he had very little to eat. Thank you. I'm looking for the words. Do you know the meaning of dad? Hello. Yes, you're Hello. right. Do you know what ragged means? Where? Ragged. His clothes were in rag. Rag means parcha, parcha almush. Okay, thank you so much. So please, someone else continue. 
I can continue. Okay, please. In those days, people did not often travel far from the village in which they lived. Dick's village was a long way from London. When the village people talked of London, they spoke of it as a wonderful place. They said that all the people in the city of London were rich. They even said that the streets of London were paved with gold. Dick listened to these tales and he longed to go to London. Thank you so much for your contribution. Please, kids, highlight paved with gold. Um, do, you want, do you know the meaning of paved with gold? Donatılmış. Altına dolu. Absolutely right. So I'm looking for other words and do you know the meaning of village? Okay. Okay. Okay, we can go to the next page. Sure. Another you can read it. I can read. Okay, teacher, please continue. Dick thought that if he went to London, he would be able to pick up golden from streets. Then he would become rich and need never feel cold or hungry again. Dick made his mind to go to the London, although he had no idea how far it was. He made his few clothes into a bundle and tied with the bundle to the end of his stick. Then he sat, to the, sat off to walk along the road to London. Thank you, teacher and other kids so much. This is the end of the first chapter. I want you to highlight rich, first of all, and then made up his mind. Rich means zengin. Made up his mind means karar vermek. Is there any other word you would like to ask me before finishing? What does bundle mean? Bundle means demet in Turkish. Um, okay. What does set off mean? Set off means yola koyulmak. Because he's going to London, right? For chasing his dreams. Yep. Okay, guys, thank you for coming and listening to my lesson. It was so joyful for me. I would like to see you at the next week. See you. Ciao. See you. Thank see you, teacher. Thank you. thank you so much for listening to us. This is our reference list. And this is our picture references. And this is our YouTube reference.